You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast, delivering the knowledge in all things fitness business. We help gym owners win. Here are your hosts, Tim Lyons and Randy Exton. All right, welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, in studio, Scottsdale, Arizona, at the ProFit HQ. With my co-host, the ranger of results, Randy Angston. What's up, buddy? Good morning. You might hear some uh, heavy deadlifts going on back there. Did you see that? I did. Got those Arizona Diamondbacks in here. How about that? Yeah. You guys better watch out. These boys are hitting heavy weights. Heavy deadlifts, though. I mean, at least they're doing real work. I know. Got the boys pushing them back there in the gym. So a couple of announcements. Before we get deep into this marketing topic, because this is this is uh, a big one today, and we're going to go deep into the weeds a little bit, but uh, we got our automation workshops still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two, what, two, three seats available at this point? God, dude, it's tight. Um, you better every, jump on every, it. every day somebody's pop, you know, yeah. pulling pulling the trigger. So uh, jump on that. We do have limited seats, so if there's if it's still up, grab it. It's pfmarketingsolutions.com slash automation. That's February sixth and seventh. We're going to build out your entire systemized automation play. Yep. Yeah, and if you're uh, not clear on what that is, jump on a call with me, pfmarketingsolutions.com slash call. Uh, I'll run you through, uh, you know, we've got, I've got a beautiful walkthrough video that'll show you what a, what the lifecycle build out actually looks like from, a, you know, so the, from the software standpoint and things like that. Um, but yeah, let's get you some clarity because this is changing gyms entirely. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it, this is hands down probably the, well, we've talked about it. I mean, this is the one area we're going to really run hard for and, and really elevate uh, these gyms that we're working with this year. So if, if you want to be part of that list, let's get in touch because you need it. Time's running out on that. So cool. So what are we talking about today, Randall? Marketing. Ranger. We're, we're going to get into um, kind of what you mar- – I don't know what to say what your marketing should say, but f- what is the what marketing is, that you're doing? Yeah. yeah, what is marketing as a whole? Um yeah, I guess we could just get into it. Yeah. You know, the thing about ProFit, you know, in our name, and we're trying to kind of get away from it a little bit, is ProFit Marketing Solutions. That's that's how we came on board, right? We mm-hmm. came on board getting clients for gym owners, right? And it was always, our, our you know, our tagline was, like, we solve client generation problems for gyms. Correct. Not, not lead generation, but client generation. There's a big difference. There's yeah. There's a big difference between a lead and somebody who's actually going to become a client. And when we say when the general term marketing is thrown out to gym owners the first thing that comes to mind is lead generation yep. marketing equals lead generation that's what gym owners feel think and that's what they ultimately want is mm-hmm. leads now the first thing i would say is how those leads come in and what they come in from is the entire success or failure of the campaign yeah, the majority of it yeah i can get you leads for you know pennies Mm -hmm. if we really really thought about this but those those leads aren't going to ever become clients yeah so what is the point yeah and like we were talking this morning before we got on right what is the solution to the problem that you're you're solving for business for as a business like what are you bringing to the marketplace what are you known for and your marketing should be a direct representation of that and i think that we've gotten so and we've talked about this before. I mean, the last six months, I'd say, you know, we're heavily pushing the the value of the the message that you're bringing to your marketplace. What are you saying to your audience? And like you said, I mean, we could, we could generate leads with an ebook with a, a something of value. We could we can get you a lead. Does that mean that person wants a personal training membership? Maybe, 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 not. maybe not. Yeah, exactly. But the value of that lead to your business and what it, I mean, what you're capable of selling that individual yep. depends on how they came into your ecosystem, right. Right. and that matters. And I do think you need to generate leads in order mm-hmm. to, to to survive in the game. Uh, but we're going to get into you know how those leads come into your into your world and how you're nurturing those those leads. So. Let's go back to the whole term direct response marketing mm-hmm. for a second. We, we've we've touched on this several episodes, and this is what you see in the market from your competitors, from other gyms. You see, here's my thing. Yep. Maybe it's a challenge or a program or a transformation or a thing or thing. Buy it. Opt in. Buy now. So you can buy my thing. That's really what you're telling your audience. 
other things that could be lead generation tactics or strategies, I've seen all of them. Here we go. I'm just going to rattle these <laughs> off. Obviously, a, a lead magnet. And I wouldn't say a lead magnet's bad. I think they're actually really good. Mm -hmm. and we've done very well, very well with lead magnets. But you can't just take a lead magnet. And sell from it. And just turn it into a member tomorrow. Correct. Yeah. Lead magnet might be a lead generation, um, a free offer, right? Seven day free pass, three day pass, free appointment or a consultation. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Um, I've seen sweepstakes, you know, hey, enter to win a free membership. Okay. You can get a ton of leads with that. Do those, do those leads turn into clients? Almost never. Re yeah. Almost exactly. Never. A fraction of that group. So if you had a marketing company that's going to run a, a, a lead generation strategy, that's a enter to win a free something like a sweepstakes for a free year, six months, three months. It's a waste of time. I'm well, and, and, and just to touch on that, we've talked about this in the email um, episodes we were talking about the email deliverability and things like that recently it's not necessarily the size of your list it's the quality yeah, of the contacts yeah. in your list and this is this goes hand in hand with yep. what you're saying yep you can get leads from a list you can buy them oh god don't ever I mean do don't yeah. but you know like just you can yeah you know what and I mean it, it's it's a possibility people do and it and almost it almost seems like every marketing tactic that comes out is just another angle to get somebody in as a lead, but not really a member. And that's exactly I think why we've pivoted so hard. We saw that that is not the problem that we want. We want to be solving for the marketplace, right? right. Gym owners leads so rarely was the actual problem. It wasn't the number of leads you needed. It wasn't I need everybody gets on the phone with me and says I need more leads. Mm -hmm. Just get the people in front of me. I'll close them. Well, that's awesome except what are we doing to attract that lead yeah. what do you what do we what do you want to be telling these people so get into that right now because you you've uh, you've been reading a book uh, yeah you've read it a couple times now let's talk about that yeah so seth godin's uh uh this is marketing you know he re he really drives home the 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 point that marketing should be a representation of the solution that you solve for your market, for the marketplace. Okay, so it, so maybe the solution might be weight loss. Weight loss, sure. Okay. Yeah, right, let's so use that as an example, right? But then your marketing message rarely should be the direct response. What we should be doing is is the education process, the nurture process. People come into your ecosystem, you know, a lead, maybe before you have their lead. Uh, let's say they, they came across your Facebook page or your website. What is the message that you're sending them? Are you a challenge-based you know, gym, is that what you offer? Yep. Are you offering weight loss? Are you trying to sell something? Because marketing and sales are vastly different. Marketing is a change of, Seth says it in within the book, but um, marketing, uh, separate from sales. Sales is the actual process, the exchange of value, right? Money exchange for a service or a good. Sale or marketing is the conversation that happens before that. Let's, mm -hmm. like we've talked about in the past, the awareness triangle the yep. uh, the most educated consumer who knows the solution that they're looking for for their problem that's the hardest person to market to it's the most competitive person to, to market to and that's the only person being marketed to with direct response i wouldn't say it's the hardest i think it's almost the easiest to market to it's the smallest of the population well, but that, that's what I mean. it's the hardest to acquire because of the level of competition right everybody's going to that person because that person's the most aware of what mm -hmm. they're looking to purchase. In in retrospect, right, we have the bottom of that awareness triangle that has the uneducated or the, the unaware. consumer unaware yeah. who doesn't even know that the problem exists necessarily. So when it comes to lead generation, right, that's the, e the, the most affordable person to get into a list, mm -hmm. but they're the least likely to sign up for a membership today. So that's where the marketing comes in, right? The change when, when in order to sell something to somebody, you need to change a belief system, and you take them from th something that they currently believe, and through education, through knowledge, through nurture, you change what they know to be true. And when you can do that, you create that connection, and you have a now you have an inclined buyer. You have somebody who's who's tuned in to th the value and the message that you're saying. Well, to that point. Somebody that believes that fitness is not the solution for them, if you can change their mindset, like, yeah, personal training is the solution 
mm-hmm. you've got a buyer. Well, let's 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 use a hard example that we we did in the past, right? When we when we learned through all of this, um, what we created an ebook for the most uh, oh, the, yeah. the the most unaware consumer, right? We did an ebook called "Sitting Is the New Smoking," had nothing to do with selling a, a gym membership, right? But what we did is that piece of value allowed us to get somebody's information as an exchange of value, right? They opted in, they got the ebook. Now through a nurture process, we're educating that person that sitting in a sedentary, you know, lifestyle is creating a unhealthy situation which is leading to excess weight, which is leading to all the other problems that they're experiencing. The symptoms, yeah. And then now, you know, we're educating that person about the problem that they're experiencing, providing multiple solutions honing in on personal training being the right solution for them and then positioning an offer once that person ascends themselves up into you mm-hmm. know the position ready to buy almost i don't see anybody doing that in the marketplace no it's too hard it, it's very difficult but at the end of the day those are the people that are going to walk into your gym with a credit card hand out yeah. and say i want exactly what you have to offer yep, exactly and that's the thing that you know that is the best client because they're not coming in on the hook or the free or the thing. They they came in because they want the result or the solution. They want they want their problem solved. And and, and they've they've chosen you or your facility as the absolute solution to their that problem that they're experiencing. Yeah, think about the reader of that ebook, right? And you could we can even have gone deeper with some video series and some stuff like that. But think about the reader. They're reading this and like, yeah, wow. That is me. And that's exactly what we're trying to create. Like good marketing should do those aha moments to, uh-huh. to, to the end user. That to me is marketing. And, and I think for the last few years, like I've almost had resistance around the direct response side of things because I know that nine, uh, you know, nine out of 10 of those people that we're hitting aren't really there for the long-term solution. You know, we hooked them with the candy bar effect, right? At the checkout, right? It's, it's urgency, scarcity, low, low dollar amount. It's a impromptu purchase as opposed to, building that like trust and respect factor, allowing the consumer to decide that we are the absolute right decision for them. And really the, the point here is that you're trying to make, you know, the, the biggest point is that this is going to sustain the business over the long exactly. term versus getting the people off the street that are ready to buy today. I mean, those, some of those people will stay because don't, don't get me wrong. You can hook somebody in with a challenge sure. or a transformation that stays years. You can, we've done it. Everybody's doing that. Mm-hmm. But, do that plus exactly plus these are layers yeah exactly these are the folks that are ready to buy six months from now and when everything's dead these people are walking in and these are the people that are going to be the ones that keep your lights on for like we said the long term these Mm -hmm. are the people because you've you've created that relationship it's not just a sale it's not just let's take it a step farther you you put you produce this piece of content let's mm -hmm. call it content in this in this could be any type of content could be a video an ebook or a report or any of these types of things you get that lead then what like you're not going to physically text these people every single day or email Mm -hmm. them you got to create automation automations yeah and automations can be done through software we use keep for this you know, formerly known as Infusionsoft, we use Keep. We're doing this exact thing in the workshop. We're we're not doing particularly these lead magnets, but you're going to learn how to create this automation cycle and how to get people bubbled up into asking for an appointment and then eventually coming in and solving their problem, yeah. which is becoming a member. So, and it, we, we we in a way are. I mean, within that life cycle build out, I mean, there's the long term nurture that's that's doing that. It's providing a consistent education platform. Consume. Uh, uh, educating the consumer over the long term so that when the timing is right for them, they're making the decision to come in. Right. And that's what it, what good marketing comes down to. I mean, he in the book, he talks about brand, you know, what is your brand worth? What does your brand say? You know, he talks about how many billions of dollars Nike's spent to make a swoosh, you know, globally recognized yeah. for performance, for, you know, all those things. And he's like, it, you know, it sets an expectation too. Your brand sets an expectation. Yeah. He said, if, if Nike were to open up a, a hotel, we would have a pretty good assumption of what that hotel would look like. Yeah, that's um, true. You know what I mean? Because we, uh, us in the marketplace, we've, we've seen so much of, of Nike's marketing over how many years that we know what that brand stands for. Sure. Um, he said, you know, the fonts that are used in Vogue are not the same fonts that you see in Sports Illustrated or, um, you know, he uses a couple different examples, but, you, you know, like the clothing, right? The consumer that's buying from Vogue 
isn't the same person. You know, it's not buying athletic gear that me and you are looking at. Mm -hmm. We have to, there's an elite, there's a status, there's a, and you have to play into that. Your marketing is a direct representation of what you want to be known for. Yeah, so it's, it's the, it's the message you're putting out into the market. Mm -hmm. right? So, and that comes from everything from your Facebook posts and Instagram to your, you know, your signage to uh, your yeah. website, obviously, and mm. anything else that you put out. So if it's a podcast, like you can look up our Pulse Fitness podcast, Healthy Living Scottsdale. The the team here has, has decided uh, upon themselves, uh, uh, you know, based on my recommendation, I think it would be a good thing. They took it and they ran with it. I think, you know, they're into 10, 11 episodes now mm -hmm. and they're, they're loving it. And our clients are loving it and they're sharing it. And th that's another great way to market. So mm -hmm. if you guys... You know, the first person I saw that did a podcast for their own gym was was Casey uh, Washak. You fit forty two guys. Mm -hmm. I think he was the first one that I saw. Just you know, and he did it on his phone with the anchor. You know, thing. I think he's, he think he's leveled up since then. But um, you know, I talked to our podcast guys, and they said this is a great idea. Yeah, just do it. So yeah. of course we're doing it. It costs money and time, but I guarantee we're talking to somebody on those podcasts today. That will become a member in three, four, five months from now because it, of the because of the podcast. Exactly. I mean, we we go through it with this all of the, this podcast all of the time. I get people that jump on calls that have no idea who we are, or what we do. They've just heard, somebody passed along our podcast. They own a gym. They saw value. They want to they want to dig deeper. Hmm. And uh, again, it's a it's a pole in the water. You know. That's again, it. layers. It's it, you know what's funny is I'm starting to see more of that from marketers out there. Poles in the water. The term fishing with all the, everywhere now. Ugh. Man, this is something we've stood on for years. Of like not just having one thing going on, having multiple poles in the water. You've heard us say it a million times, but now I'm starting to get emails <laughs> from from people cold emailing me talking about the same thing. Like I wonder where you got that from, but. It's the truth is the one thing ain't working anymore. You well, better you better diversify anyway. This is not an easy thing for us to say. You know, f it would be much easier if we built it if we stood on the business that said, "Hey, let's just go continue to create leads for gyms." Oh, I know. What we're doing is hard. It, it, not only that, but like at the end of the day, what we're providing in the long term for for our listeners, you guys listening, these are tactics and strategies that hold the test of time. We want to teach you how to market irrespective of the offer outside of what's working necessarily today, build a process and a system in place where you can swap out the offer all you want. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's irrelevant. But and, the process that's, that's, that's happening is where the power is. And nobody else is having that conversation. And if you go back to one of our previous, it's probably called The Power of the Evergreen. I think that's the name of the, the, uh, the podcast episode. Mm -hmm. I, truly, all marketing should probably point to an evergreen trial that's your standard trial. Yeah, anyway. I have this conversation with, with people all of the time regarding their offers and what they're doing and what they're known for. I mean, gym, gym owners have 500 different things running all the time to try and get leads in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's just replacing an offer. What, what can I say to the person to get their interest today? Well, how about you fix or you solve the problem that they're experiencing? Yeah. What is that problem? Talk about fat loss. Talk about strength gains. Talk about in a way that the consumer is receiving perceived value. You know, they're perceiving the value. Yep. And then you create the relationship and stop trying to sell them today. Create a relationship with these individuals. Allow that time to take place, you know, to, to happen so that you can create that change in their belief. Allow them to self-select and then they're going to be the one walking through the door instead of you having to chase them down and, try and to slap them in the face with, with some hook. Yep, exactly. And, guys, this isn't the, the short-term solution. This is the long-term solution. Yeah. Yeah. If you need leads, you're going to still have to do some direct response style stuff, but I would, I would highly recommend it's a systematized trial, evergreen style offer that is, is your team knows how to convert. You know what the, per, like the product that you're giving them in the trial is the same product they're going to experience exactly. once they become a member. It's just maybe condensed down into two weeks. To try before you buy. It's really it is. So, and it could be paid. It should be paid. In fact, the ones that are paid, uh, those always convert better. Yeah. Than free. So hopefully this strikes a chord. You guys are listening to the podcast for a reason. That's to 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 win. Obviously, that's what we're trying to help you do. Um, take this and start building out a, you know, like a content strategy that speaks to the problems that your current clients are facing that you can 
provide the solution for. Yeah, and, and, and you touched on it there. It's not the short term. Like you need to have a little bit of both. And we teach, you know, understanding the temperature of the marketplace, understanding your business within the four walls. Where Do I need clients today? Do I need, you know, to gain long-term sustainable clients? I think that your, your evergreen offer and the problem that you're solving for the marketplace needs to be the majority of the language and communication with that marketplace. Mm -hmm. The offers that you, you switch, you know, timely January transformation challenges, summer shreds, whatever you want to do. All of those things have their, their place, but that should not be the core foundation of the message. Get back to building the relationships with these people. Beautiful. Perfect. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. If you want to get in on that workshop, do it today, pfmarketingsolutions.com slash automation. And if you want to jump on a call with us, pfmarketingsolutions.com slash call. call. Until, next guy, <laughs> <laughs> until next time, guys, keep changing lives. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.